This video is by Straight Goods News. SGNews.ca. The foreign policy leak. Yes. Uh, were you something? Are you, are you um, surprised by this? Well, I'm not surprised in in terms of what it's saying. I'm surprised that uh, it had been as detailed as it was. But look, we've had uh, a number of years now. We've had a government that seems to not really have a defined foreign policy, and it becomes um, a question for the rest of the world as to where does where does Canada stand? I'll give you a, a concrete example. A couple of um, uh, weeks back, uh, almost months ago now, there was uh, a, a summit uh, to decide who was going to be included at the uh, East Asia Summit, uh, which is a group of um, countries that uh, are discussing the issues of the Asia Pacific. Uh, Russia was invited to the table, as was the United States. We were not. And uh, one of the reasons uh, was, uh, as was pointed out by the head of the ASEAN, was that we are uh, no longer involved in peacekeeping, peace building, and Canada seems to uh, not bring much to the table. It is, uh, for me, that's a clear indication that the rest of the world is looking at Canada and saying, what are we bringing to the table? In the case of Africa, we've uh, kind of ceded that terrain. Uh, in the case of the rest of the world, they're looking for Canada to do what it used to do, and that is to be involved in things like peace building, peacekeeping. And um, we don't seem to have much to offer. So as a result, it affects uh, our trade. Um, you know, and that's because government hasn't really understood that. If you're going to uh, have robust trade, you have to have robust diplomacy, and you have to invest in uh, foreign affairs around the around the world. There seems to be this mixed message coming out of the government right now: is that okay? Well, we're going to just do trade deals. We'll forget about uh, human rights. We'll forget about peace building. We'll forget about uh, Africa. Um, and and the rest of the world has noticed that, I think. And now we have people within uh, the department who are saying, uh, well, you better be careful what you're doing here because it seems that uh, you have lost your way. Their recommendation, I don't know, is, is the way to go, is seemingly just um, uh, jettison uh, the, the things we've done in the past. Uh, I think most Canadians would like to see us do what we've done in the past and probably be a little more uh, you know, uh, aware of what it means to be in a multipolar world. Is it even legitimate to say that they can boost trade by just doing trade deals? Well, no, it, it doesn't work. Trade? It doesn't work. We have now signed trade deals with countries that uh, uh, you know really don't lift all boats up in Canada, nor do they help the people we're trading with. A great example is Honduras. Uh, we signed a free trade with Honduras, which amounts to, uh, as was calculated by someone recently, about uh, 78 seconds of trade with the United States in a year. So, you know, you can't tell me that this is going to make a big difference. They've um, not been able to sign one trade deal with anyone in Asia. Uh, Brazil is is elusive. And uh, India, they're still trying to figure out how to do the dance. So, all of the emerging uh, economies, they haven't been able to figure out trade. And diplomacy matters with all of the countries that I just mentioned in those regions. So, you know, it seems to be a failure of uh, leadership vision and in the end at the end of the day it's a failure of uh, comprehension. to say trade trumps human rights. What do you think about that, sir? Well I think we're abandoning principles that have guided Canadian foreign policy for generations. And the more they try to deny the document, the more they're confirming that its contents was actually prepared by this government. So they can start doing the back crawl all they want to move away from this thing. It's clear reflection of conservative priorities. In the past Canada made democracy a priority. We made peace a priority. We we made human rights a priority. Now we're making commercial deals a priority, even when people are suffering in some of the countries we're working with. We think that that's an abandonment of Canadian principles and values, and we would love to see Canada get back to being a respected, even-handed player on the world stage. What do you mean surprised by this? Do you think it's a support to the Sinopec the Conservatives have made it clear from the beginning that they're not going to respect Canadian sovereignty over our natural resources. We think that's a terrible mistake. It should be borne in mind that the FIPA, the Foreign Investor Protection Act, is what is the priority for the Conservatives right now. Once any Chinese state-owned com company would gain control of an entity like Nexon, they would be allowed to bid, for example, on oil leases. We would no longer have control of our own natural resources. In the case of a communist country, it's obvious there's no difference between the state-owned company and the state itself. So it's China that would be owning our raw primary natural resources. It's absurd. It's a huge mistake. 
the Conservatives should back away from this and take some time to reflect on the effect of this. We saw this week that one of the American companies that was involved in the shale gas play in Quebec is currently suing the federal government for $250 million for what they perceive to be a lost potential for their wells there because Quebec has backed away from shale gas because they don't like the current techniques that are being proposed, you know, the injection of known carcinogens into the soil is a bit of a problem for anybody who's actually thought about this. Mais,